Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing draft grades for each team through the 2023 NFL draft class they just picked. We're going to be taking really everything into account here. It's in alphabetical order. So first we're going to touch on the Arizona Cardinals who had a huge trade back with the Houston Texans from 3 to 12 and they got some really good compensation out of it. Pick 12, 33, and a 2024 first which was the Texans first. That's a huge deal. It was not the Browns first that they also have. And a 2024 third for pick three and pick 105 from this year. Huge trade there. The Cardinals add another really, really high round, high pick, I would say, first, which will be the Texans. I still don't think there'll be anything better than a bottom 10 team, a bottom 10 team next year. So really good trade there. And the Cardinals used pick 12 to actually trade back up with the Detroit Lions. They packaged pick 34, which they added. They had pick 33 and 34 due to the trade. They packaged pick 34, I believe, and traded back up to pick 6 to get their offensive tackle 1, protecting Kyler Murray for the future, which I really like. I think that's a great decision. Then round two, pick 10, they added some edge help, which we all knew they needed front seven help so desperately. BJ Ojolari, I really liked. I think he was a bit, little bit underrated in this draft class. So I think that was a really good get for them there. Added Garrett Williams out of Syracuse. Michael Wilson out of Stanford in the third. John Gaines, who's a pretty cool story out of UCLA. Clayton Toon in the fifth. Not really huge on that, but whatever. Owen Popo was a really good athlete at the Combine. Keytrell Clark, one of the top slot corners in this class. And Dante Still is defensive tackle. When we take into consideration what they got for next year with that Texans first round pick that could be franchise changing, I really, I'm going to incorporate that into this grade for sure, just due to the fact that it, it really explains a lot of the picture here. But purely off these prospects and the fact that they did get that first for next year, I rate this a B-plus draft. They really hit tackle, which they needed. They got some edge help. I really like B.J. Ojolari. They added a corner. I like that a lot, too. Michael Wilson's a really good wide receiver. It's an overall pretty pretty solid draft class here. And they got the first. That's that's the big thing for me. That's, a, that's such a huge win for the Cardinals there. The next team we'll be looking at is the Atlanta Falcons. And the Atlanta Falcons went Bijan at 8, which is controversial, but we know how Arthur Smith likes to run a team and run that offense. They really are huge on the run game, and this pick really shows how invested they are because Tyler Algier, their fifth-round rookie last year, went for 1K, 1,000 yards um, on the ground last year. So even though that happened, they say, we need more, we need more. So there's Bijan at pick 8. Could be a reach, but it was kind of a dead zone because Tyree Wilson got picked the pick before to the Raiders. So I don't think it's that crazy, honestly. Pick two, they went Bergeron. Uh, they did need they did need some tackle for the future. Bergeron might be a little bit early here, but I don't mind it because there's really a big fall off on the tackle class right after Bergeron. Zach Harrison from Ohio State went in round three. Kind of surprised to see that, but he has a good edge and they... We know they really needed edge help here. Clark Phillips, I really like this pick. Great slot corner. Plays with a ton of intelligence and is just overall a physical, high motor, good football player. And we have seen that. And then they added some seventh round value here. DeMarco Hellams, the third safety picked out of Alabama this year. And they went and got Javon Gwynn out of um, South Carolina. I do not know much about him. But overall, I would probably rate this draft class a C plus, maybe a B. I'll go B minus. B minus is my pick here on this draft class. I think they added maybe, I mean, this could be one that we look back on and say Bijan was what ended up getting them to the Super Bowl because of how much he brought to the table. But due to the fact they already had a running back and I'm not a huge running back guy, even though it is Bijan Robinson, I'm going to rate this one a little bit lower just due to that. And maybe Zach Harrison a little early in the third. Didn't like the most. And they just really didn't have that many picks. So they could have done a little bit better with them possibly. I'll give them a B-. The Baltimore Ravens had also not that many picks. But with their first, they went Zay Flowers out of Boston College. 
They just brought back Lamar. He got extended. He got the deal. The whole drama is done. And the first thing they did was draft another first-round wide receiver. They've made it clear they want to help Lamar. I respect it a lot. And Zay Flowers could really, really be good. I mean, he gets the A-B comps. Who knows? He could be A-B. Let's see. Trenton Simpson is a very speedy linebacker out of Clemson. Um, They always love to steal guys that I think the Steelers are going to get. And they did it again. Trenton Simpson will be a very good player. I'm pretty confident in it. And it kind of makes me fear for Patrick Queen's longevity in Baltimore. But that may not be a bad thing for sure. Then they went Tavius Robinson, Edge out of Ole Miss. Caillou Blue Kelly I really like a lot uh, in the fifth round here. That's a good pick. And then Voorhees in the seventh. I know he had the whole injury and he's going to be out a year. But he's a great guard and he really showed his grit and just who he is as a person by doing the bench after tearing his ACL. So what a guy. He'll be out a year, but when he comes back, he will be a problem at that guard spot. He'll be very, very good. I think I'm going to rate this Ravens class a B. That is what I'll rate this Ravens class. The Buffalo Bills are up and The Bills here went Dalton Kincaid. They jumped right in front of the Cowboys at pick 25. Picked Dalton Kincaid, who this pick I'm not really sold on just due to the fact that Dawson Knox is getting paid so much money. I get like they're going to get off that money, obviously, because you are just not going to house a first round tight end with a fifth year option and Dawson Knox for a long time, probably. But I really love the Osiris Torrance pick, which I could, thought could have been pick 25. But they went and got him at pick 28 in the second round, which would be overall pick 59. The value there is absolutely very, very, very good. I love that pick a lot. That's one of the steals of the draft, in my opinion. Torrance played very well against Jalen Carter, who is it's a great sign to see if you're looking for true guard play because Jalen Carter is almost generationally good at rushing the passer. So Osiris Torrance at pick 59 is such a steal. Dorian Williams, I also liked a lot out of Tulane. This was a pretty thin middle linebacker class, but Dorian Williams was a fun one. Again, very undersized, almost like all of these uh, middle linebackers in this class, it seems, other than Jack Campbell. But Dorian Williams can really just get in the gaps and knows how to play ball without getting hit. So round five, they got Justin Shorter, who I think may be going a little early here. Um, He is a really physical dude who has the frame and everything. Maybe he will be a steal here. Not huge on it. Nick Broker and Alex Austin I don't know much about in the seventh round. There's one pick that I thought was a reach in the first, and then one pick that I thought was a steal in the second. I'm going to give this Bills class a B plus due to the fact that I really like these middle two picks here, and they didn't really have that many picks to work with. So I'll give them a B plus here. The Carolina Panthers only had five picks in this draft. Round one, two, three, four, and five. They went Bryce Young first overall. Great pick. Very smart pick. I also like Jonathan Mingo in the early second. And he's someone that kind of rose up there at the end. But I do think that with his frame and what he's shown, he could be a great receiver. And they really needed to add some receiver help to that room. So I like this Mingo pick as well. DJ Johnson felt pretty early in the third to me. But these edge rushers start to really become more who you prefer and what your scheme is so on my big board I didn't have him nearly close to pick 80 but uh, I can understand how a team likes a guy that fits their scheme Pittsburgh traded back actually this pick 80 here Chandler Zavala in the fourth is a really good get Um, pairing back up with former teammate Icky pairing back up with former teammate Icky Aquanu Um, both out of NC State. They stay local in Carolina. And Zavala is a really, really good guard. I think I had him as my guard three, maybe. He He was pretty high up there. And then Jamie Robinson. People were talking about him in the second round. The fifth round is appropriate. I think that's where he should have gone, maybe even the fourth. And this is good value for just a good ball player who... Uh, is around the ball a lot at Florida State. I got to watch him a ton because I go here and go to all the games, watch all the games. He is around the ball a lot, and that's a very underrated thing to look at when you're looking at safeties, guys that are just in the mix. Overall, I think I would give this Carolina Panthers class, I'll give them a B+.
The Chicago Bears had a lot of opportunity within this class, and the capital they gained by trading back, and they gained for next year by trading back, and Ryan Poles really had a lot of opportunity, and it's hard to grade these without expectations of what it could have been, so I'm going to try to do that, but this draft class could have been really, really good with the capital they had, and I don't think it was nearly as good as it should have been by Poles. Pick 10, they traded back out of Jalen Carter, which just is so tough because, man, that felt like it would have been such a good fit for them. They still are so weak on that front seven. And then they went Gervin Dexter in the second here. They went Darnell Wright at pick 10, which fills their tackle need. Their other tackle, Braxton Jones, they didn't invest that much capital into. So it's understandable how they're not committed to him for the future. So they got Darnell Wright, didn't give up a sack last year, showed great tape against Will Anderson. We know he's a good player with size, really shot up draft boards there at the end, and he was the second tackle off the board. Pick 22, Gervin Dexter. I'm really, really not high on him personally. I I see where he could go in the second round for sure. He just is pretty slow off the ball and can get fatigued very easily, it seems, but yeah, Gervin Dexter still addresses their addresses their need there on the front seven and can contribute. Tyreek Stevenson, I do like this pick a lot. This is a really good corner out of Miami, one of their only bright spots this season in Miami. Um, I do I like that Tyreek Stevenson pick for sure to address the boundary. We don't know how Kyler Gordon will really shape up in Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago because he was rough at the beginning of last year and started to show some flashes at the end, but was really, really rough at the beginning. Zach Pickens, defensive tackle out of South Carolina. This is the first pick of the third round. I really, really like Zach Pickens. Um, He was a really good player at that combine. I liked just all of his testing. He looked very NFL ready. Roshan Johnson, I love this pick. I think Roshan Johnson may be the most underrated running back out of this class, along with Israel Abanaconda. Roshan Johnson can truly be a three down back in the league. I believe it. And I believe without Bijan Robinson sticking in front of him last year and him being second on the depth chart, he would have been so much higher in this draft class. This could be a big steal for them. Tyler Scott out of Cincinnati, also a true speed receiver that gives them some vertical threat. I like this pick in the fourth a lot. I think that could be a steal as well. Noah Sewell in the fifth. I really am not high on Noah Sewell. Um, I guess the fifth here, you can't really criticize too much because that's probably where his value is but he was mocked at the beginning of the year to go top 10 in the draft possibly at least first round and he just did not look good he looked slow him and Henry To'o To'o both just seemed to fall off completely and both did not look like good players I don't know much about Terrell Smith Travis Bell or Kendall Williamson being completely honest but from what I do know in this class I would grade this Bears draft a B. It could be more towards the C+. They got some value here, also reached on some guys. I think they really needed a hit on that interior of the defensive line. That could have given them a A, but really not a fan of the Gervin Dexter pick here. So that will hold them to a B. That is my grade. The Cincinnati Bengals had... An interesting draft, that I would say interesting for sure, especially by drafting two wide receivers with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd already rostered. Miles Murphy in the first was pretty questionable to me. They have Hendrickson and Hubbard off the edge right now. I know Hubbard is definitely not the reason you would not pick an edge. I understand that for sure, but Miles Murphy, I feel like there could have been better edges off the board there. I would have even liked B.J. Ojolari on that team. But a lot of people were high on Miles Murphy. He stays in the orange from Clemson. Now, I really like this DJ Turner pick for them. I'm a very, very big fan of DJ Turner, and I think that he is just such a good cover corner and will contribute very well to this Cincinnati Bengals team. Jordan Battle as well. That's a good safety pickup. I do really like this pick a lot. They needed safety after both Jesse Bates and Von Bell left. So Jordan Battle, the second best Alabama safety there, does address that. He's not Brian Branch, but he is still a very good safety. So I do like that pick a lot. Charlie Jones also is pretty slept on out of Purdue. Maybe should not have gone this early, but he is productive and 
He looked good against Joey Porter Jr., which is a pretty good sign because Joey Porter's a great corner. Chase Brown out of Illinois is kind of looking like their backup plan here because P. Ryan is now gone and Joe Mixon is he will be back, but we don't know really his future surely. So Chase Brown is a good good pick there in round five. I think that's good value for him for sure. In round six and seven here, we had Andre Yoshivas out of Princeton, who's really, really good. Um, he was a part of that Princeton Tigers team. Their uniforms look a lot like the Bengals uniforms, but I love him in, pick six, or in round six here, actually. Pick 206. I think this is insane value for a guy. Has upside, has smarts. <laughs> uh, well, smarts on the field. I didn't even mean to allude to Princeton. Um, is just a really good football player, and I think there is something there for sure, especially in the sixth round. Brad, they got the punter from Michigan. Seems like they liked a couple of Michigan players here. And they went DJ Ivy, uh, defensive back I don't know much about, out of Miami in the seventh. So overall, I would give this Cincinnati Bengals draft class. I'm going to go with a B here just because I really did think they would look some towards the interior of the defensive line and maybe a better safety. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stick with a B on this class because the two wide receivers are good, but I think this there just could have been better. Uh, Miles Murphy in the first is really the thing that's holding them back in this class to me. Other than that, I'm really liking the depth down the board here. But Miles Murphy was not my favorite pick there at pick 28. The Cleveland Browns had an interesting draft for sure. I feel like I've said that a couple times. But like some of these drafts is just caught me caught me off guard a little bit then picking a wide receiver first rostering i can't even name i mean we got amari cooper donovan peoples jones elijah moore marquise goodwin we have david bell who they drafted last year in the second round that, that right there is five receivers and then first pick they pick cedric tillman so it's like how are you going to roster all of these receivers now i know donovan peoples jones will probably be gone after this year but it's still like Maybe you just don't pick a receiver with that first pick there. A little bit questionable to me, but great receiver in Tillman. I like him better than Jalen Hyatt. I think he is the best receiver out of Tennessee, and I think that's a great pick if they didn't just have seven receivers. They also have Anthony Schwartz still, I believe. Yeah, I, I don't know. Whatever. Siaki Ika is just a pure nose tackle. They added some just really, they really added some weight there and really tried to bolster up that D-line which is a good move because they needed it. Their run game was pretty rough last year and just a run-stopping nose tackle with a ton of weight was probably the best formula for really helping that run defense this year. DeWan Jones in the fourth feels like a bit of a steal to me. Uh, obviously, a lot of people were concerned by his weight. That's why he fell this far. But still, at pick 111, DeWan Jones feels like a steal. He was looking at back in first round, towards second round hype most of this draft cycle and pick 111 is pretty pretty good value for dewan jones obviously there's things that i don't know that gms know about the weight situation with him but i still like that pick isaiah mcguire is a good end and i like that a lot you're really trying to bolster up the guys around miles garrett to give him help they brought in okoronkwo out of houston the texans this offseason and then you're getting more depth pieces with isaiah mcguire here i like that a lot now, this is a fun one. Dorian Thompson Robinson as another quarterback. I like this one a lot. I really do. They, they added Josh Dobbs back to the roster. They also have, uh, what is his name? Can't think. Can't think. This is their fourth quarterback on the roster. But DTR has some sneaky upside due to his ability to run as well and be a dynamic kind of quarterback. So I like this. It's a cool pick here. Um, adding some... You know, he, he can do other things too. Maybe he comes in in some other packages and he can really learn from some of these really more veteran quarterbacks. So that's a fun pick. I like that pick. Cameron Mitchell out of Northwestern. Funny enough, this is their second Northwestern cornerback, the other being Greg Newsom. So they, you know, it's kind of rare to see Northwestern corners, but Greg Newsom and Cameron Mitchell are on the same team. And then Luke Weipler in the sixth is an absolute steal to me. I know he doesn't have the play power and the play strength that some people would like, but he really was a good center there at Ohio State and was a good leader. And round six here, Weipler seems like such a steal to me. Such a steal. He could have been easily around three to 
to four guy, even maybe higher back into the second. So this is great value here. And they really kept two Ohio State tackles close to home. So this, this is a pretty good draft. Um, I just These first picks are killing me. I'm not going to lie to you. So far, what I've been through, it's like receivers is not your value there, in my opinion. But I'm going to give this one, I know I've given a lot of the same grades, but it seems like there's so many like B to B pluses to maybe A minuses in this draft. I'm going to give this one a B plus due to the fact they addressed the trenches where they really needed to. The Dallas Cowboys draft started off with Mozzie Smith, the nose tackle out of Michigan, who's a really good player. And then they went double up on Michigan. Luke Schoonmaker, the tight end who was going to be 25 his rookie year. They picked him. Uh, yeah. Whew. This one, this one's pretty questionable to me. I did not like this pick. I didn't mind the Mozzie Smith pick as much as some other people did. But Schoonmaker just did not really move me at all. Actually, probably moved me the wrong direction on my opinion of this draft class. They got the Sweat Bandit, is his nickname, DeMarvion Overshone out of Texas. He stays close. He's a really good player. Round three, I didn't really have that great on him, I don't think. I think it was more of a round four to five kind of guy. But Overshone is a good player. And if you like a guy, you go get him, keep him close to home. I don't, I don't mind that. I don't mind that a bit. I'm still stuck on that Schoonmaker pick. I don't like that at all. They got Fahoko out of San Jose State. Also a good end to help there. We have Asim Richards in the fifth offensive tackle from North Carolina. They got Deuce Vaughn in the sixth. His dad's actually the guy that called him, and um, he works as a scout there for the Cowboys. So it's very, it was a very cool, very cool phone call. It's got to be a great moment for Deuce Vaughn. I really like that. Eric Scott and Jalen Brooks I don't have much of an opinion on because I didn't watch much of them. Um, overall, from what I know in this class, which is really up to about, I know Asim Richards and Fahoko. I don't know much about Eric Scott. I think I've heard of and Jalen Brooks. I don't know anything about. So just rating this, I'm going to give this one a C plus, honestly, due to the fact that Schoonmaker was not the pick here. And Mozzie Smith was an okay pick. But I think they really wanted Dalton Kincaid, who got swooped one pick ahead of them by the Buffalo Bills. The Denver Broncos draft was pretty limited. They only have five picks here. But I'm not going to lie to you. I really, really like these picks. Marvin Mims is a great receiver. And this is kind of signaling to me. Marvin Mims is a great receiver. And this is kind of signaling to me that they may be ready to move off of someone like Judy or Sutton, possibly. It could also just be a depth piece because we've seen KJ Hamler go down with injuries back-to-back years. And Drew Sanders, I really like as someone that gives you the ability to rush the passer from the middle linebacker spot. Riley Moss out of Iowa to get them some corner help. I like that pick. JL Skinner in the sixth. I know he had the injury in the pre-draft process, but I think JL Skinner may be top three safety from this class. I really, really like Skinner. He has the size. You can really move him around and do so much with him. And then Forsyth out of Oregon. Got some center help there. Don't have much of an opinion on that one. But from what I see here, I'm going to give this an A. I like this draft a lot, even though it's limited. You can't do so much with it. But I'm really going off of what opportunity they had. And I think they really took advantage of that a lot. So I like this one a lot. I'm giving it an A. The Detroit Lions here. They, this one is a very controversial one, by the way. Jameer Gibbs got picked at pick 12, and then DeAndre Swift was dealt yesterday to the Philadelphia Eagles, which kind of explains the pick much more. He wasn't dealt when they made this pick, so people were all very confused because Gibbs kind of resembles how they used DeAndre Swift. So how could you roster both of them? But now it's Gibbs and it's David Montgomery coming in from the Bears. And I don't mind it as much now, but pick 12 is still very rich for Jameer Gibbs. He's a great player. It's nothing against him. It's just the positional value. And they said they would take him at six. I just don't see it. So personally, not a fan of that one. I think he could have still been there at the beginning of the second round for sure. Maybe he wouldn't have been, but at that point, they have much bigger needs in my opinion. That is just my take on it. And this could look like a great pick when we look back on it. Jack Campbell at 18, their other first round pick. And I think when I'm really talking about these first rounders, it was just the hope that there was so much opportunity with pick six and pick 18 to really make a splash. 
and put them over the top. They were already, you know, looking at playoffs last year. But we thought these picks, 6 and 18, which turned out to be 12 and 18 and 34, would be the ones to put them over the top. And then at pick 34, they picked Sam Laporta over Michael Mayer. And it's like, wow, (laughs) they just want to test us, huh? Um, So these first three picks just hurt. Jack Campbell, I do like. Again, pick 18 for a middle linebacker position that's not that valued these days. I get he's their perfect, like, Dan Campbell, middle linebacker, so I don't mind it. This one I don't mind nearly as much as the Gibbs one at 12. It's not nearly as much of a reach, but it's still a reach. Jack Campbell could have gone in the early second as well. I believe both of these guys could have been early second guys. And then they passed up on Laporta, or passed up on Mayer for Laporta. I liked Mayer a lot more as just a true tight end, their Hawkinson replacement. But Laporta will still be a great tight end, I believe. I still like him a lot, just not like the opportunity they had. So. They really made a dent, though, and made up for it with Brian Branch here. Great pick at pick 45. This could be a top 10, top 15 player in this class. And they're kind of telling C.J. Gardner-Johnson, hey, we just drafted your replacement immediately. You haven't played a snap for us, so you better be good or else we have your replacement, um, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, on a one-year deal. And, yeah, Brian Branch is next up if there's any kind of problem with him. Hendon Hooker at pick 68 to back up Jared Goff, possibly be the next guy. Again, wasn't a fan of this. Hendon Hooker coming off the ACL will be 26 rookie year, won't even play barring an injury um, to Jared Goff, and he really just needs to heal, and by the time he's going to touch the field as a starter, he may be 28 years old. I just don't love the value on this early third round pick. So, yeah, I'm not huge on that. Broderick Martin... Um, also didn't have him ranked very high as a defensive tackle. And then Colby Sorsdahl, I don't know much about out of William and Mary. Didn't watch any film on him. And Antoine, Antoine Green, I knew about out of North Carolina, but I didn't watch much of, so I don't have much of an opinion there. But it just felt like there was so much opportunity with these early picks, these first, first through third round picks that they had two of each. And if you would have told me the D tackle they got out of the first three rounds, the one D tackle they got, which they needed so badly, was Broderick Martin, I would have been very disappointed. And if you would have told me that they went and reached on Jameer Gibbs at 12, I still think that was probably the miss of the draft, possibly. And Hendon Hooker here just feels also like just not needed. So I'm really not a fan of this draft. I'm going to go ahead and give the Lions a... C. The Green Bay Packers were up here, and they started it pretty interestingly with Lucas Van Ness. Everyone thought they could do Jackson Smith and Jigba, but they decided to pass again for a defensive player. Keep the trend going. It's almost like a joke at this point, but uh, still a great player. He did not start in his senior year. Fun fact, did not start a game, but really contributed when he did. And seems like such a Packer to me. Then they went and got Musgrave early in the second. He was great out of Oregon State. I like him a lot as a weapon for Jordan Love. Then they went in the second and got Jaden Reed. Which, if you would have told me before the Senior Bowl that Jaden Reed would have been a second round pick, I would have told you you're crazy. He was the 50th pick, so a top 50 pick. But that Senior Bowl really put on. And that just shows you the value of the Senior Bowl there. Um, It was amazing what it did for his draft stock. And they took him at pick 50. And then they doubled up on tight end within the second and third round and went Tucker Craft, who's also a great tight end. So they really gave him, you know, they love to run 12 package and they have absolutely no tight ends after Tunyon went to the Bears. So I don't mind that at all. I like getting him weapons, uh, Jordan Love there, to start his career off right. Colby Wooden is a good linebacker here out of Auburn. I like that. Sean Clifford in the early fifth. I don't know if you needed to go take him that early. I don't think he was going. I don't think he was going to get drafted, honestly. But clearly they liked him. They gave him a top 30 visit, which was a little bit weird. But yeah, that one is... Sean Clifford uh, iconically beat out Will Levis for the Penn State job. So that's what he has on his resume. That's probably about it. But Sean Clifford being four months older than Jordan Love right now is surely interesting with Jordan Love going into his third season in the league. Dontavian Wicks here out of Virginia is a good receiver. 
Uh, it's good value there in the fifth. Carl Brooks, I like in the sixth. That's a, that's a good pick. He's a edge rusher more than he's a linebacker there. And then they got Anders Carlson, which is Daniel Car- Carlson's Daniel Car- Anders Carlson, which is Daniel Carlson's little brother there in the sixth as well, out of Auburn. Good kicker. And then they got Carrington Valentine, who honestly went a little bit late here. I thought he could have been more of a fifth round kind of guy. So I think they got good value there in the seventh. And then they had <laughs> three more with Lou Nichols running back out of Central Michigan. I didn't watch any of him. Anthony Johnson, I did out of Iowa State. Um, he was a good safety in a pretty thin class. So I like him here at pick 242. And then Grant DuBose out of Charlotte, they drafted another wide receiver. So they drafted three wide receivers. It was clear they're going to make sure they want to do help Jordan Love a bit. So I like that. I like that a good bit. I'm going to give this Packers class a B, I would say, due to the fact that it was a little bit interesting, but it did help support Jordan Love in his future. I, the Sean Clifford pick is silly to me, but other than that, the Van Ness pick I really didn't like much. I'm going to go ahead and give this whole class a B-, minus. That, that will be my grade, a B- minus there. The Houston Texans now, now they had a really stacked early round. They got CJ Stroud at pick two, then traded up from 12 to get Will Anderson Jr. So they got their two blue chip prospects that they loved, but they traded their next year's first for it. So now they still have the Browns first, but they their first may be really good because this team got better throughout this draft, but not that much better. And I still believe they'll probably be a bottom 10 team and that first next year was a very valuable first. So that one hurts a bit. Juice Scruggs, really good center out of Penn State. I like that a lot. Tank Dell in the third. It's a little shot kind of, but Tank Dell, really dynamic, you know, wiry, skinny frame, but can create. Keep him in Houston. I like that. Dylan Horton here, edge out of TCU. Can give him some edge help. Henry Toe Toe. Now they have at their linebacker core, Christian Harris, Alabama. Henry Toe Toe, Alabama and Will Anderson Jr., Alabama. So it's clear they have maybe a little bit of a type, maybe. Jarrett Patterson, they went two centers here. (laughs) One's obviously going to probably kick the guard, but these are two great centers, and Juice Scruggs and Jarrett Patterson. Xavier Hutchinson, I really liked, and I think was very underrated. And the sixth, good value. Brandon Hill as well. Uh, Safeties were bad in this draft class, but Brandon Hill was a good safety out of Pitt that I did like. I'm going to give this class an A off the value. And if I had to modify it for seeing what they gave up next year, I would say a B. But just off of the picks they made here, I do like these. I don't really like the Toe Toe pick because he's not good simply. But everyone else here, I like this draft a good bit. I'm gonna give him an A. The Indianapolis Colts went ahead and took Anthony Richardson at pick four. And this started one of the most athletic draft classes that we've ever seen, following it with 6'4", Julius Brents on the perimeter. Josh Downs, who can do much more than he's supposed to be able to at his size. Out of Baware at pick 110 to me is such a steal. Blake Freeland can step into tackle day one. He is a plug-and-play starter, even though he went here at pick 106. Darius Rush, great senior bowl corner from South Carolina. Will Mallory, they went and got Jalen Jones as well to play there in the slot at corner. And Jake Witt can possibly... Hop in. I, I really like this draft class. This is one of the best out of this class for sure. And the most athletic draft class. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this draft class an A. The Jacksonville Jaguars disappointed me a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. They traded out of their pick to go back to pick 27. I thought they would take Brian Branch when he was there because they really need that nickel corner. But they traded back and took Anton Harrison to really try to fill in and be their next tackle there. And he's a pure pass protector, isn't very good in the run game. And just, I I don't know. I didn't really like this pick for them personally. I get you're protecting Trevor Lawrence in the pass game, but Brian Branch seemed like such a fit that that one hurt kind of. Britton Strange at pick 61 also was pretty peculiar to me. I didn't like that pick at all. Tank Bigsby at pick 88 also didn't move me very much. And then they reached on Ventrell Miller. Tyler Lacey is a good, a good value here. If Again, edge rushers, it's all about your scheme and who you like. 
uh, body type wise. Yasir Abdullah is a pretty good linebacker out of Louisville. He was there at Louisville with Yaya Diaby. Antonio Johnson was a great pick here at pick 160. I think they got good value for him. Parker Washington also was a pretty solid receiver. They had a lot of late picks here, but there's not many names here that I even recognize. Um, Eric Hallett, I know because I'm a Pitt fan. And other than that, I really think they missed with all of these, not all of these picks, but having this many picks, they did not get that much value out of it. Anton Harrison can start for them, but Brenton Strange does not move me very much. Same with Tank Bigsby. Ventral Miller feels like a big reach out of Florida. I get it, but I don't really get it. Uh, this one was pretty disappointing. I'm going to give this class a D plus. The Kansas City Chiefs draft was a kind of typical Kansas City Chiefs draft. Felix NUDK Uzama out of Kansas State stays close to home. I like that pick. Uh, it makes sense. You know, again, edge rushers, people like their types. These GMs like, you know, who they like at edge rusher. I'm pretty, I'm pretty hesitant to really criticize on that because it's all down to like the archetype of edge rusher that they like. And I'm not exactly fully familiar with all of these GMs and their preferences. Now, what I didn't like is the trade up for Rasheed Rice, who I'm not very big on. He kind of causes himself to have to be in all these contested catch situations, and he's very good at making those contested catches. But in the NFL, that doesn't really translate, in my opinion. Wanya Morris at tackle. Yeah, add some depth. I get it. You see how these guys get injured nowadays. Wanya Morris could start this year. Um, Yeah, I, I don't really mind it. But other than that, B.J. Thompson is a true project out of SFA, Stephen F. Austin State. Um, he could really mold into someone dynamic. He flies off the edge. Keandre Coburn was a good value pick here, uh, D-tackle out of Texas. And Nick Jones out of Ball State there with the compensatory 250th pick. I'm not huge on this draft class personally. I'm going to give this one a C. The Las Vegas Raiders went ahead and picked Tyree Wilson at pick seven across from Max Crosby, even though they do have Chandler Jones, but Chandler Jones, as we know, is getting much older. He still has the moves, but I really like Tyree Wilson, and I think it was so huge for them to get more pass rushers, so I like this pick, especially with Wilson falling to seven. Michael Mayer was a steal at pick 35. The Lions let him slip. They took Sam Laporta one pick ahead of him. And the Raiders said, hey, Darren Waller replacement right here. True tight end. We'll take him. Love these first two picks a lot. Byron Young as well. D-tackle out of Alabama. I did like. Uh, Trey Tucker out of Cincinnati. I think he was the second best uh, wide receiver out of Cincinnati there. I think Tyler Scott was better. Ja'Korian Bennett, one of the best athletes, quickest runners at that NFL scouting combine out of Maryland. Aiden O'Connell. And the fourth is a bit early for me. I'm just not a big fan of O'Connell. Chris Smith out of Georgia, the safety, is just a good player. Doesn't have much size to him. But it's not a horrible pick here at 170. And Amari Bernie, another linebacker like Ventrell Miller out of Florida. Nesta Jade Silvera out of Arizona State. Looked at him a little bit. But I'm really, really impressed with these first two picks here. This is not typical Raiders fashion, and I'm for that reason, I'm going to give them a B-plus on this class. I didn't really like some of these picks through the middle here. Trey Tucker and Aiden O'Connell, Chris Smith, don't really like, but I'm going to give them a B-plus for the just the sole reason of those top two picks. The Los Angeles Chargers went Quentin Johnston at 21, staying with the same tall receiver archetype that they love so much, following it by Tuli Tui Pulotu out of USC, who's a really good edge. And I do like him a lot, so I think 54 is a good range for him. Dion Henley at 85 feels like a steal. Henley was one of the most exciting middle linebackers in this pretty weak middle linebacker class, and I like that a lot. Now you see a theme here, TCU, TCU, TCU. Looks like they got a little squad going. They want the second wide receiver on that TCU team, Darius Davis, who gives them the speed threat. Even though Quentin Johnston also does, he gives them the pure speed, possibly kick returner threat. Jordan McFadden, good guard out of Clemson, like that for a depth piece. Scott Matlock I didn't watch any of, I do not have an opinion on that. And Max Duggan, we know he can come in and really compete for you. Doesn't really have any of the intangibles, but we know he will you know, put his body on the line and he will compete for you for sure. 
So overall, looking at this, Quentin Johnston, don't really love the pick just due to the fact that there were other receivers on the board, Zay Flowers. And I think he could be good, though. You know, We're quick to rule him out just due to the fact that he isn't good at the uh, catch point. But overall, I'm going to give this class a B. Uh, I do like some of the moves here, but others I disagree with, such as you know, Darius Davis here, like you're, you're getting a kick returner in the fourth. Yeah, he could obviously could also be a deep threat. I love Dion Henley here though. I'm going to actually upgrade this to a B plus. Uh, no, I'm not. This is going to be a B class. This is a B. So don't mind it. The Los Angeles Rams had a ton of picks in this draft class and they started out pick 36 with Steve Avila who can step in and play guard immediately. I was surprised to see him go before Osiris Torrance, but Depends on the scheme. Avila is more of a zone running scheme kind of guy. Byron Young in the third edge out of Tennessee was very good. Same name as the Alabama defensive tackle. Kobe Turner gave them another name up front, which they so desperately need. Stetson Bennett in the fourth is kind of funny. Um, I don't agree with this at all. I don't like Stetson Bennett much as a prospect. I know he won two national championships, but the fourth round is pretty silly to me. Nick Hampton out of Appalachian State was a good pick here. Same with Warren McClendon in the fifth. I like that a lot. Davis Allen as well. Good tight end out of Clemson. And Puka Nakua out of BYU. Another good pick. Travius Hodges Tomlinson slot corner in the sixth is such a good pick. I love that pick. And they got Mr. Irrelevant, Deswan Johnson. Overall, Zach Evans is here too. I wasn't very high on him, but in the sixth, good value. I do like this Rams draft for the value that they had. I'm going to give this one a B plus. The Miami Dolphins only had four picks in this draft, but they hit Cam Smith, who I really, really liked. I wish he was a stealer. Um, looking back at it, I like who we got. But Cam Smith is a great corner, and this is kind of hinting towards Xavier and Howard possibly being gone. They keep up the track team with Devin or Devon Ashane who was a sub-20, 200-meter runner out of a and true track star. This has to be the fastest team that we've ever seen. Elijah Higgins out of Stanford, uh, Michael Wilson's you know, teammate, um, Ryan Hayes out of Michigan. They really needed to address the tackle spot. I'm concerned that they didn't. For that reason, I'm going to give this draft class a B, just because I really think the tackle should have been a big priority here, and it really wasn't. The Minnesota Vikings only had six picks here, but I love the Jordan Addison pick across from Justin Jefferson. They needed a wide receiver badly, and they got another really good route runner who has twitch in him, and is just a great ball player, even though the intangibles and the measurements don't really say so. Makai Blackman was one of the highest PFF graded cover corners in college football for the last couple years, and in the third round, it's great value. Along with Jay Ward, they seem to love their LSU players, as you see. They went USC, USC. LSU, LSU. <laughs> and they followed it up with Jacqueline Roy, which they really need some interior defensive line help now. And Jacqueline Roy does help. Jay Ward's also an all right pick there. I don't really have him going in the fourth, but that is perfectly fine. Jaron Hall here is a backup quarterback. Kind of surprised they didn't go higher on a quarterback in this draft. Maybe Hendon Hooker or even, I mean, we saw things, them trading up for um Anthony Richardson didn't happen. The way McBride, kind of a fun player here out of UAB, but seventh round makes kind of sense. Uh, I I do like this draft class. I'm gonna go with kind of an average answer and give them a B minus here, just due to the fact that they really did need to address corner and they did. They also needed to address wide receiver and they did. Also D tackle. They really hit positions in need, and I like that a lot. Running back, they may trade Dalvin Cook. They might rock with Alexander Madison and Dwayne McBride. Don't mind it a ton. But just out of positional need, they really hit the positions they really, really needed. So I like that a lot. The New England Patriots got probably one of the biggest steals in the draft. Christian Gonzalez here. They traded back to pick 17 and still got my corner one. I love that pick. Kind of cancels out with Keon White at 46. 46 isn't too bad value for him. I'm just not a big Keon White guy at all. Marte Mapu was a really fun pick out of Sacramento State. Such a fun pick. And he didn't even get invited to the combine. So pick 76, trust Belichick. That's all I'm going to say. 
Jake Andrews out of Troy. Um, very, very heavy emphasis by Belichick here on the interior of the offensive line, going City Sow out of Eastern Michigan, and then Antonio Maffi out of UCLA. They went kicker at 112 in the fourth round, kicker. And then 192, punter. This was the first draft since 2000, I believe, that a kicker and a punter were both drafted by the same team. Pretty interesting, I'll say that. Demario Douglas I liked a bit out of Liberty, especially here in the sixth round. Amir Speed, he has to be good, right? His last name's Speed. Gotta be good. But uh, Keishon Bouti is also a story here in the sixth round. He's one of those guys that really fell. I mean, people argued that if he got injured at the beginning of his last year here, he would have had higher value than if he played, which I would completely agree with because his antics off the field and lack of hustle and drops on the field, his stock took a huge hit. If anyone could pull Booty out of this little rut, it'd be Pete Carroll or Bill Belichick. So I trust Belichick to possibly make Booty a steal in this draft. I'm going to give this class a, I might give this class an A just due to the fact that Christian Gonzalez was such a steal. I'm going to give him a B plus. The New Orleans Saints didn't really wow me personally. This A.T. Perry pick in the sixth to me is one of the biggest steals of the draft. But Brzee in the first, I'm not really moved. Isaiah Foskey at pick 40 seems very, very high, like a reach to me. I like Kendra Miller a lot. His contact balance is ridiculous. You really saw it in the Michigan game. Kendra Miller is a great pick here. I really like him at 71. Dude is a beast. His co- contact balance is insane. I also like Saldaveri here in the fourth. Really good guard out of Old Dominion. Um, Jake Hayner also in the fourth. A lot of people are excited about Hayner. He looks like... Kind of a um, lesser version of the, you know, with the dynamic play style like Patrick Mahomes. I really like Hayner. And in the fourth, that's that's a cool little um, pick to play with there for the Saints. I do like that one. Jordan Howden also, good safety out of Minnesota. And then A.T. Perry really takes the cake there. Pick 195, that's a steal. I really don't like these first two picks. And for that reason, I'm going to give this draft class a B-. minus. But down the board here... Pretty, pretty solid picks, especially the A.T. Perry one. The New York Giants hit very well on this draft. Deontay Banks was a great pick there at pick 24. Gave him that corner help they really needed. And then John Michael Schmidt stuck around till pick 57 and was there for them to get him. And they needed center so badly. They get a plug and play. Great starting center. I love that for them. Jalen Hyatt also made it to pick 73. Gives them that... Just that straight speed, the game speed. He doesn't have necessarily the 40 time. He has a quick 40 time, but not the dynamic. But watch him when he plays. Once he gets up to speed, the man is unstoppable. <clears throat> and we saw that by him winning the Bulletnikov last year. Eric Gray also is some good running back help. There's still questions about Saquon, what his future will be. And they went ahead and addressed that with picking Eric Gray in the fifth. Other than that, don't have much of an opinion on these back end guys here. But I'm going to give this an A for the draft, honestly, because these three picks right here addressed three huge needs, and Eric Gray was a good pick up there. Will McDonald at pick 15 here caught me way off guard. I did not think they were going to reach that far on him, uh, especially over someone like Jackson Smith and Jigba. I know they have a lot of receivers, but for the future, it could have been really cool. Also, Broderick Jones got snatched right in front of them by the Pittsburgh Steelers on the trade-up with the Patriots. I think they were very disappointed in that. But I'm not so out on the Will McDonald pick yet. Joe Tipman was good value. They needed some center help there at pick 43. I like that pick a lot. Carter Warren's also a good tackle out of Pittsburgh. And then they followed with his teammate, Israel Abanaconda, who I love. He produced so much last year. And I think he could be this year's Isaiah Pacheco. They also went Zyra Barnes, Bernard Converse, another corner out of LSU. I think that was the third possibly. And then Zach Kuntz, who is a insane athlete. I think he is the 10.0 RAS score, which is the best ever of a tight end. Just ridiculous at six, seven and a half. Um, what an athlete. So he, he'll be fun on that offense for sure. I'm going to give this draft a B minus. I'll give him a B. 
I'm going to give this draft a B. The Philadelphia Eagles here, and man, all I'm going to say immediately is A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Jalen Carter fell to 9 to them. Then Nolan Smith, his teammate, to 30, and they snatched him. Needed the edge help, too. This is going to be disgusting. Tyler Steen gives them good tackle help, which they need. Can possibly kick inside, maybe not. Sidney Brown also, not the highest on this pick, but still a good pick for, you know, they needed a safety there. Keely Ringo, pick 105. I'm still a Keely Ringo believer. I'm still a Keely Ringo believer. I truly believe he can still be good in the league. Tanner McKee somehow made it to the sixth round, so they get a good backup quarterback. And then Moro Ojomo and the seventh is also a good D tackle out of Texas. A plus, A plus draft. The Pittsburgh Steelers also go Broderick Jones on the trade up for pick 110. And then Joey Porter sticks around until pick 32, and they take the guy that they were possibly going to take it. 17 if they didn't trade up for Broderick Jones. They get both of them. And then Keanu Benton helps on the interior defensive line so much. A Wisconsin player and TJ Watt also from Wisconsin. These three picks, amazing. And then Darnell Washington. We trade back to get another fourth. And Darnell Washington sticks around and we get one of the most dynamic athletic playmakers just out of pure frame, not necessarily athlete in quickness, but we can run so many heavy packages with Washington, and he can be a red zone threat. I love this. Nick Herbig out of Wisconsin, another linebacker. We have TJ Watt out of Wisconsin. We add Nate Herbig's brother, who we just signed in free agency as an offensive guard. And then Corey Trice, a pure press man corner. Can't do much else, but in the seventh round, we get another press man corner who some like Brett Coleman had going in the first round. So I feel great about this pick. Spencer Anderson played all over the line in college in Maryland and will give us some just backup versatility. A-plus draft as well. My top two drafts are Eagles and then Steelers, in my opinion, and then Colts so far. 49ers draft, they didn't have much opportunity starting at pick 87, but they went Jair Brown, who I liked out of Penn State a lot. Then they went kicker in the third round out of Michigan, Jake Moody, who's a really good kicker, but third round is a bit ridiculous. Cameron Lawtu, Daryl Luter, Robert Beal I like in the fifth here a lot. He was a good edge at Georgia. There's a lot to work with there. D. Winners, I really like this pick in the sixth. This is a very good pick. Ronnie Bell as well is a good ball player out of Michigan. Um, Overall, with this draft, they didn't have much to do, but what they did do with it was pretty opportunistic. I'm going to give this draft a C+, just out of the fact they picked a kicker in the third. It's pretty ridiculous. The Seattle Seahawks here. Now, this is also a little controversial just because of very being surprised. Just because of being surprised in the first round of pick five. Devin Witherspoon is a beast. He really is. And they really loved him, apparently, because they passed Jalen Carter for him. And that's a huge need of theirs. But him and Tariq Woolen are going to be really nice. JSN is such a pick. I love this pick for the Seahawks. They have DK, Lockett, and now JSN, who doesn't even have to be their wide receiver one to start, obviously, because of DK and Lockett. So he is going to eat as a complimentary wide receiver there. Derek Hall is a bit early for him. Personally, there were better edges on the board at 37, but again, edge rusher, if they liked him, I believe in it. Charbonnet and another running back, Kenny McIntosh, down the board. Both a little bit interesting because Kenneth Walker is there, but they did lose Rashad Penny. So you do have to have depth and they love their run game. So make sure you have good running backs in case Kenneth Walker gets hurt. Cameron Young, I liked a lot out of Mississippi State, along with Mike Morris Morris, and Olu Oluwatimi, two Michigan guys right here. Uh, I like these picks a lot. I'm going to give them a A for the draft. The Seahawks had a really good draft. It's going to change your team a lot. Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the line. A draft I didn't really like. Kalaja Kansi is a good player, but at pick 19, I get you try to put him next to Vita Vea, get some pass rush going. But I feel they could have really solidified their tackle spot, which they tried to do here with Cody Mauk, who I don't really like that much. He can play both guard and tackle. He's just a vicious kind of blocker, but I don't know how he's going to really line up with his size against these DNs in the NFL. These 
two picks. This should have been an offensive tackle, in my opinion, and this could have been a D tackle. And then Yaya Diaby in the third is a bit early for me. Same with Servosier in the fifth. Actually, eh, Servosier in the fifth is fine. Payne Durham's a good tight end out of Purdue. Trey Palmer I liked a lot in the sixth. That's a good pick. And Jose Ramirez. I just really, really think they messed up in these first three picks here. And these just aren't going to move them towards winning that division or really sustaining their rebuild, in my opinion. They really needed to bolster the trenches. And a pass rushing smaller D tackle, it could be just what they needed. But in my opinion, you're kind of looking at more of a luxury guy in Kansi. So I'm going to give them a C minus. The Tennessee Titans went Skronsky at 11, which I mocked a ton to them throughout the draft process. And then they went Will Levis at pick 33. Finally took him off the board. And he's going to be competing with Tannehill and Malik Willis, which I'm sure he'll beat Malik Willis out pretty pretty clearly. Also, Tajay Spears at pick 81 I like a lot. I really do. you got to look for the future past Derrick Henry. And Tajay Spears is a really dynamic player. He does have injury history, which is surely uh, concerning. But... I like that pick a lot. Josh Wiley out of ten or er, Josh Wiley out of Cincinnati. Jalen Duncan here fell pretty far to 186. Gives him another good tackle. They went and got two. And then they finally picked a receiver, which they really should have addressed earlier. Colton Dowell out of UTM. Surely they saw him from being local. But their one thing that they missed big time. They only have Traylon Burks and then Nick Westbrook Akine. It, it's looking pretty rough. They let Robert Woods go looking pretty rough at wide receiver there but tackle was a huge need for them and if they're going to stick with the derrick henry game plan then they do need those tackles so don't mind that at all and levis levis at pick 33 is good value and i believe that he could be something so take your shot there they're kind of working into a rebuild here i don't mind it i'm going to give him a c plus last team here we have the washington commanders and I really didn't like this draft class. You go Emmanuel Forbes over Christian Gonzalez, which if you would have told me that before draft night, I would have flew to Washington myself and told them to please don't do that. And they did it anyways. And then you go Jartavius Martin over someone like Cam Smith, even Tyreek Stevenson. It just felt like so much opportunity on the board. If you're going to go cornerback back to back, I know Jartavius Martin can do more than just play corner, but... If you wanted to hit two corners, really get that room back in shape, and Christian Gonzalez and Cam Smith or Tyreek Stevenson were the alternatives, and you picked Forbes and Jartavius Martin, I would be very upset. Uh, Ricky Stromberg's a good center. This may be even a little high for him, though. I liked Braden Daniels a lot here. This is a good pick. Same with KJ Henry. Uh, he was supposed to be so great. Really didn't pan out through the process, but there's still something there. Chris Rodriguez, I like this pick all right he was good at kentucky but they have a messy backfield there in washington and andre jones i just felt like there was so much left on the board for them if they really wanted to attack that corner position and they didn't take advantage i'm going to give them a d that's going to wrap up my video for today thank you so much for watching and let me know what you agree with what you don't this was my grade based off of what teams gave up what opportunity they had. Obviously, a team with three picks versus a team with 10 picks isn't going to get as much value. I try to look at it from an opportunistic standpoint. Hopefully, that kind of makes sense. But thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you, and peace out.